setting up a roofing insurance claim supplement system or an insurance restoration general contracting supplement system. I want to talk about that, but before I do, happy 2021, baby. Oh my goodness, we're finally out of 2020 into the new year and good riddance, <laughs> good riddance. So happy new year to everyone out there that's watching this. And I just want to thank you for your support of this channel, of me, of my podcast. I realized, and I, I fail to mention that in most of my videos, but in a lot of my videos are repurposed for audio and they play on my podcast. So if you're on my podcast hearing this, I especially want to take a moment to thank you. I can't believe how much the podcast is actually taking off. Like it's, uh, I'm starting into the fourth season now. This is episode one of season four on the podcast. And uh, just so many, so many different platforms out there that the content is being consumed. And I want to say about 2021, I just, I'm going to continue to step up uh, my commitment to the content. You know, I've, it's interesting. I've hired probably three different times. I've hired someone to help me out with editing and things like that. And it just didn't really work out um, more than a, a couple different videos. And so for the most part, just about 98, 99% of all the content that you see that I make is filmed by me, you know, it's uh, edited by me, it's, you know, all of the process of getting it uploaded and storing everything and, and the text that goes into everything is, has been done by me. So I'm not saying that to get credit for that. I'm just saying that as an excuse to why my content is not as fancy as some of the other stuff that you might, you know, see out there. However, I do believe, you know, when I, when I did make my content a little bit more fancy at times, um, you know, just trying to focus more on getting more you know, graphically appeasing to the eye, that kind of thing. I, it just seemed like you guys didn't want that. It seemed like I didn't get a lot of people to watch that, those kinds of videos. What you guys really want to see, it seems like more times than not, is the actual substance that's in the video. And so I just want to focus on giving you more and more substance, more value that you can use to win in your everyday battle with insurance claims. And I'm talking to, most of the time, I feel like I'm talking to contractors on here. Um, and I realize there's some public adjusters out there. There are even some insurance adjusters that watch this content and have been, have given me mostly positive feedback, believe it or not. I have had some, some negative feedback from, uh, I feel like mostly adjusters, you know, get the the thumbs down you'll see like one or two of those on some of these videos and the more watched you'll see more than that but i i just think those are usually from adjusters that found the video so i want to say hello to all the insurance adjusters out there too um i get a lot of comments that are obviously from uh insurance adjusters but for the most part the the support has been just amazing phenomenal so i just want to don't want to go on too much about that but i want to thank you for that the channel is growing i just think in 2021 amazing things are going to happen with this channel with the podcast with uh, other platforms that i've been a part of and speaking of that last year i had the chance to do the 100 towns tour i've met many of you that are watching this i'm sure uh got a chance to to speak and do training at a hundred different towns all across the country. And I've, I've had the opportunity through that and other means to meet literally thousands of contractors that are out there. It's really helped me, and recently, so it's really helped me to gain an understanding uh, of what you guys go through out there and in different parts of the country. I mean, I've really been able to have my finger on the pulse, I feel like, of the state of this industry as we head into the new year and obviously this year with the pandemic i'm not able to 
continue on at that level with the, the, the public training events. I have uh, been doing private company training and private consulting and some virtual training, that kind of thing. So I'm not able to do this year another 100 towns tour. However, I am gonna do a 10 towns tour. And this is the first time that I've announced that publicly. I am gonna do that and it's gonna kick off in July. So much later in the year, after the pandemic, I hope, is cooled down for the most part. And it's not gonna be in 100 towns, it's gonna be in 10 towns. I'm gonna to go more regional. And I had a good feel for you know some of the best turnout in those, in those cities that I visited last year. So I, I feel like I have a, a pretty good feel for which of the 10 towns to do. And so I'm going to announce specifically those dates and locations a little bit later, but just know that is coming. I've had a lot of people hitting me up and ask me, when's your next class? When's your next training event? And so I want to choose right here to let you know I am going to continue on with that later this year. So let's get into the purpose of the video. The main topic of this video is setting up a supplementing system for insurance claims. Having spoken with thousands of contractors, having met thousands of contractors all over the country, there is one major consistent that I've seen everywhere. And that is most folks do not have a system for your supplements, okay? It's, it's astounding to me how many contractors have come to me either through these training events or contacted me for help with consulting who are currently sitting on 20 or more job files, insurance claims that they need to supplement. However, the jobs have already been built and they're just now getting around to supplementing. And when I tell them, I say, hey, the first thing you need to know, brother or sister, right? is that you have to do the supplementing before the bill. Now, for, for many people that have been watching my channel, this that may sound redundant to you because I say that a lot. You need to be starting your supplementing process before you actually go build the job. There was a, a point in time earlier in my career, over the, the course of 20 years plus, where that was the opposite. It was You actually had leverage if you went and built the job and then supplemented for it after the fact. That's no longer the case. And I feel like a lot of those old school cats are still around and they're giving incorrect advice and advising you know contractors to go out and build the job and supplement later. But for the most part, the folks that I tell that to, their response is, yeah, I know, man, I know. I've just gotten in over my head. I've gotten backed up. These things have stacked up on me or you know, we're just going too fast, we're selling too many jobs and, and doing too many jobs and the jobs need to be built and we don't have the time to supplement each one and that's why I'm asking for help because I already know that, that I'm getting burned by doing things that way. Uh, and you are, if you're doing things that way, if you're just watching this. You know, a lot of folks uh, are coming to the channel, coming to this content who are roofing contractors or general contractors, exterior type contractors, other type of remodeling, renovation contractors. But to this point, you've been doing mostly retail, meaning the you, you do things for cash price without an insurance uh, company involved in the process or, or an insurance claim at all. And then you find yourself being called out to a deal where a client it does have an insurance claim and so now you're having to deal with their adjuster and having to build a price or an estimate for the adjuster, but the adjuster wants your estimate to be written in Xactimate, and you're like, what's Xactimate? And a lot of the terminology, so you go uh, doing some research because just because you've never done insurance work doesn't mean you're not sharp, right? And you find this content. So I realize I get a lot of people into insurance claims and, and finding this content who are new to insurance claims. And if you haven't done insurance claims and you're somehow watching this, you should do insurance claims. It's amazing, right? Like you should definitely do insurance claims. Um, but for, for you, for a retail minded uh, contractor, you probably wouldn't think to go through the supplementing process first 
you would just do it and then bill them, right? Or maybe you might be the opposite. But so that's first and foremost. You have to supplement the job before the 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 bill. That is very difficult. I realize that. That's why the contractors are letting these things get backed up. So you have to establish and set up a supplement system, right? Like a process to be able to get through these claims almost like an assembly line, right? Like conveyor belts coming through and it goes from one station to the next. Speaking of that station, it all starts with the inspection, okay? So your inspection department, if you will, or station. It's gotta go through the inspection process and then it goes over to the estimate writing process, that is the exactimate estimate writing process. If you're wondering, well, I, you know, I, I like the concept, but I'm gonna do mine and I'm gonna follow a lot of the stuff you're saying, Chad, but, but I'm not gonna use Xactimate. So that's astounding to me too, how many people that I run into who say that or talk to on the phone or whatever. Listen, you gotta be using Xactimate. However you feel about Xactimate or Xactware or the fact that they have, uh, the fact that there's over 90% of these adjusters that are using that and you feel like you know they've taken over the industry with Xactimate, okay, great. Maybe you feel that way, and, and I'm not here to argue with you. All I'm saying is that the over 90% of the insurance companies are using Xactimate. And so I found the greatest success in my career by using the insurance company's rules against them, okay? And that involves going with the green, going with the green of their process, the way that they do things. I wanna go with the flow of traffic. I wanna go with a lot less friction. I don't want friction. I don't want litigation. I don't want the delay, deny, defend factor that insurance companies always play to kick into full overdrive, right? Like I want to go with their flow. I wanna speak the same language as the insurance company. That's important too. Don't you wanna speak their language? You know, right now, if you're new to a lot of this, Xactimate, uh, the terminology that insurance adjusters use, all of the stuff with replacement cost value versus actual cash value, right? And depreciation, what's that? All of these things that, are, that, are, that may seem new and deductibles and things like that. All of those things are the insurance company language, right? And you're learning the language of the insurance company. Xactimate is the same way. You know, when I first came to it, it, it seems like a foreign language to me. But now I speak that language, and now I win at a much higher level because I speak that language fluently, better than even than the insurance adjusters do. Now I want you to make that goal. I want you to play the insurance adjuster game minus policy and coverage. Don't don't involve yourself with that. You've heard me say that a lot if you've watched my content. Contractors don't have any business talking about policy and coverage, okay? And you don't need to. You do not need to discuss policy and coverage. You're not allowed to in most locations. You're not, that's first and foremost. Um, but the adjusters will use that as an advantage over you by saying, nope, can't pay for that. That's not covered by the policy or the policy this and the policy is that. When they say that, you be the first to physically recoil from them and back up. Uh, that's what I do. I say, whoa, you're talking about policy and coverage. I can't discuss policy and coverage with you. I apologize, right? Um, but you can discuss just about everything else. You can discuss all of the building materials. You can discuss price. You can discuss the building process. You can discuss damage. You are allowed to identify damage. So it's, it's astounding to me how many people are afraid to talk to the adjusters because they don't think they're allowed to. You know, the other end of that spectrum, right? Um, there's, there's contractors who are out there boldly talking about policy and coverage when they're not supposed to, but the other end is they, they don't think they're allowed to do anything, right? Here's the thing, and many of you heard me say this before, is that there is one factor that gives you the major advantage 
uh, back into your favor over the insurance adjusters, the neutralizer, the equalizer, if you will, and that is the building codes. The building codes. The adjusters don't know anything about building codes, usually. So if you can familiarize yourself with building codes, if the, the client has ordinance and law coverage, okay, I just said don't talk about policy and coverage, However, you do need to verify the coverage. You do need to do that. But if they have coverage for ordinance and law, okay, then the insurance company has to pay to build uh, according to law, what the law says. That means that, that if there are codes that prevent you from going back the same way that it was done before, and they have to now, there, there now has to be upgrades to comply with those codes, then the insurance company has to pay for those line items, okay? So it is a beautiful thing most of the time, right? So but you need, a, you need a, to, to familiarize yourself with that. Okay, now, so the inspections turns over to the estimates, so the estimate writing department, and I, I tell people in my training events that sometimes I'll bounce around. You have to follow the bouncing ball, but I'm back to that main road. We talked about the inspection department and the estimate writing department using Xactimate, okay, using the insurance company rules. Now, from there, everything has to go over to what I would usually refer to as the supplementing department. So if we're talking about roles here, it would be an inspector, an estimate writer, a supplementer, third, right? So like three different phases to that. That's difficult to do because usually the inspection data that you're collecting on your jobs, like the measurements, the photos, and things like that, usually you're getting that from your sales rep. And there are all different types of models. I'm not gonna get into that on this video. It'll be covered way too much on this one video. I don't wanna get too far off topic. But there are all kinds of different sales models out there for how you deal with your sales reps. You know, there's one prevalent model where a sales rep is also, he's like a sales, he or she's like a sales rep slash project manager. So they do the sales, they do all the inspections, they meet with the adjusters, and they manage the job, and they kind of do a profit split in some way with the company. Um, that, that's very difficult to do. I advise against that model only because I feel like the sales rep should be selling, okay? And not be managing the job because it makes them a less effective sales rep and a less effective uh, project manager. So I feel like you need to have sales reps separate from actual project managers. However you do your system, you know, you may have a lot of sales reps or you just, you might just have a couple. Heck, you might be one of those sales reps who is uh, also a project manager, you're tasked with that. And it's not, that's just how it ended up. And you're in that role now and you're watching my contact or content and you need to understand how to supplement better and build better and all those things yourself as a sales rep. So I respect that. If you're watching the content, this is going to help you too, right? However, however you get your results done, however you collect your data, I feel like most folks, their sales reps are not, or whoever it is that's getting that data, is not spending near enough time collecting that data. Like you need to be inspecting every room, closet, and hallway. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. You need to inspect every inch of the property, every inch of every elevation, the attic, everything. Getting on the roof. If you have a drone, doing a drone flyover. Make, you know, collecting video. <laughs> and so, for me, even on the smallest jobs, most inspections are gonna last a minimum of two, three hours. And so if we're talking about a process, a system here, I would say first and foremost, you need to set up some kind of a system where your inspections, you're, you're allowing for much more time on those inspections, okay? So if it is a sales rep, you know, the sales rep, if, if you're setting up you know, five, six, seven, eight appointments a day, that will not work under this model that I'm talking about. It just will not work. It, you'll find yourself so much better off doing three appointments at maximum per day versus doing, you know, all this quantity of appointments, but only doing a couple of them, you know, two to three, but spending a lot longer and collecting a lot more data, winning a lot more claims at a much higher dollar amount because there's so many more line items on the estimate that you found. That's what I see is that 
most of the, the money I make is earned at the inspection because I find damage that nobody else saw. No adjuster, no property owners. And so if you're not doing that, you're gonna miss those line items too. And so just by default, your jobs, your dollar amount, your ticket amount is going to be much lower than what it could be and much less profitable, okay? So you, you gotta be able to set up a system to where you can take longer. I think the best system is actually designating inspectors to where they all they do is when a job actually becomes signed like the sales rep would still do their uh walkthrough with the client detailed walkthrough and i have other if you're on youtube i'll link one right here to how to use that initial walkthrough to sell it right and and, and that you know that walkthrough inspection can be the thing that will help you the job will sell itself so definitely watch that video um, but I'm talking about after it's signed, after it's done, the sales rep did the initial walkthrough, found a lot of these things, but the job became signed and now it's turned over to an inspector. This is for a lot of you folks that are doing a little bit more volume. You absolutely must have a system, but even for the smaller outfits, you need to have a system. It just might be that you're the one who's handling all these different departments or just a few of you are, right? But an ideal situation would be having inspectors going out and handling those inspections 100%. This is something that I've done. I've done it as a company when I used to do the virtual estimates uh, and then transitioned that into boots on the ground um, where it was a virtual estimate, but we sent inspectors to the job to actually inspect the job on the ground uh, to where they went and inspected every room, closet, and hallway at every single job. We started that, by the way, in Chicago, and I'm out of, out of Dallas, but that, that's what I'm talking about is, so I was doing that nationally, right? But you, if you're in one market or multiple markets, there's no reason why you couldn't do this, right? Um, but setting up ins where the inspectors would go out, do all the measurements and take all the photos, by the way, minimum of two to 300 photos on every single job. How do they process all that? They upload everything to a data or into the cloud, into a database or into some type of uh, online cloud system. I use Google Drive, always have. It's phenomenal. Uh, multiple people can use it with different per, you know, permission structure, uh, structures. I use a, an internal CRM system that I built myself that, you know, that will actually pass it off from one of these departments to another. Um, I'm gonna be doing more development with, with that in the, in the future, but uh, to where I can share it with some of you guys. But that, that's how I do. But there are a lot of different CRMs out there. You need to have something where everyone can access, some kind of database that everyone can access where you're all on the same page. But we would have it to where the inspector, when they were finished with all of their results, they collected all of their uh, scope notes, their photos, drone footage, all of that, all of that would be uploaded to the job file in Google Drive and to the CRM. And so anybody can access it, access it at that point. In Google Drive, we would have subfolders that are like uh, estimate reports for all of our estimate reports, um, insurance documents, Eagle View files, um, uh, inspection results so all these ins you know the inspection data that would come in and if you clicked into the inspection results folder under that would be subfolders for drone footage photos video and scope notes so you know there's, there's a system that it, they would when they completed everything they would upload it to Google Drive and then to the CRM and that would trigger out emails to everybody involved with that the sales rep project managers and all that but also the estimate writer get assigned to an estimate writer so the estimate writer when it comes to them at that point they would have the insurance estimate right they would have the eagle view documents right they would have all of the photos that uh, the inspector took at the job they would have all of that um, they'd have all the contract paperwork, all of the, um, they would do uh, all of the code research, weather data research, right? And they would use all of that to put together a solid Xactimate estimate. Now, once that was completed, they would turn that, the, so we have the inspector, the estimate writer would turn it over to the uh, supplementer. Now the supplementer would then 
make a decision as to do we send the estimate to the insurance company? Do we send them a photo report to try to trigger a reinspect? Do we call to try to get a reinspect? What are we going to do, right? It, whatever decision is made, let's say the decision was made to send an estimate to the insurance company, that supplementer would have everything at their fingertips. They would have all the data. Again, they would have the insurance estimate. They would have the um, you know the original insurance estimate. They would have our uh, estimate. They would have the Eagle Views, all the photos that it breaks down everything, drone footage, everything that they really need. And if they made a decision to email the insurance company, they would email them to the inside desk adjuster and would say something like, we've been hired as the general contractor to perform all repairs that are prescribed by this claim. Uh, and currently our estimate is far apart from where yours is at. It seems like there are a lot of uh, items that were not included in the original adjuster's estimate. We realize that we're far apart. However, we're very reasonable and willing to work it out to get on the same page as where you are. And we're willing to meet you back out there if necessary, you know, with, a, with another adjuster or the same adjuster. We're willing to talk about these things with you on the phone. We're willing to do whatever you need us to do. You want us to go back out there, get more photos. We can do that too. Uh, you just let us know we're here to help, right? And that's, that's kind of, and so, but the supplementer would send that email and they would get the incoming phone calls that comes back from the adjuster. If the adjuster doesn't call back, then the supplementer would call them, right? So that, that's kind of how that would work. But from the inspector to the estimate writer, to the supplementer, and the supplementer would follow up with the detailed conversations, whatever else they would need, right? Um, but that has to be a system. So if you're, if you have one person doing all of that, or if you have multiple people involved, or if you have multiple groups of people in each one of these departments with a head of each department, I don't care how you do it. I can help you do it. I can advise you how to do that step by step. I've done it many times and I've helped many clients do this, but the important factor is that you do it. Okay. And I just see that no one is, you know, that are, that are coming to me that when they're in trouble, they don't have this part of the game down. And when you really think about it and you put it all together and you think of how complex it is and what all is going to have to go into doing this, it's going to seem overwhelming. You're going to think, man, I can't do that. That's a lot of work. You know, how am I going to do all that? Then, you know, listen, let me tell you first, yes, it's going to be very, very difficult. But if you can make the sacrifices starting right now to put this into place, and if you can commit to always supplementing before the build, if you don't know how to do that, then quite frankly, you got to you need to learn that. IEScertified.com. That will teach you everything you need to know with how to do what I'm talking about. The whole process, the whole thing. Like that'll even teach you how to write the estimates well enough. Um, there's 27 different Xactimate estimate templates in there. There's forms and documents and building codes, snippets, and 40 plus hours of video and audio uh, training, you know, so I think if you if you haven't done that yet, that's just silly. It's 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 fifty percent off right now. Like all the documents and estimates are worth thousands of dollars, but right now, just to access everything that I'm talking about, it's like four hundred and ninety nine dollars. That's ridiculous. That's insane. And I know it is. <laughs> you know. So, but anyway, I know that's a shameless plug there, but really, it's it's true. You know, like you need to if if, if you don't know how to do this, you got to learn how to do it. Um, and if you're not going to do that. You need to stay right here on this YouTube channel and go from one video to the next, to the next, to the next, in whatever order you can figure it out. But you've got to at least do that. You need to invest the time, you know, the research, the, the due diligence to figure out what you're doing here. Um, the good news is, is that this is one of the most lucrative, you know, industries out there, especially if you're doing insurance claims and if you're working hard to get better at that and you're maximizing those claims, you know, this is this is one of the best out there. Uh, but you gotta set up a system for that, a step-by-step -step system. I do have another video where I was advising a guy on this over the phone and we talked for an hour or so and, and I, we got a little bit more in depth with this. I'll link to that right here also. Um, and I'm gonna bring this to a close. Before I do though, you, I don't wanna hear any smart aleck comments about my Buccaneer gear that I have on right here, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I don't want to hear anybody saying anything about me being a fair weather fan or anything like that, you know, because, you know, we got uh, Tom Brady now. You know, I don't want to hear any of that. 
Um, I just so you know how I feel about Tom Brady. Never used to like him because I, I liked Peyton, you know, for so many years. But uh, but now that the GOAT, the greatest of all time football player, is on our team, I'll take him. When I say our team, meaning it's always been our team. It's always been my team before Tom Brady. Um, and that is because my uncle played for the Buccaneers. He was a starter for eight years. He retired in 93. His name was Rob Taylor. He was a right offensive tackle. He was a beast, but that was back in the creamsicle uniform days, and he never even got to see the playoffs. But but I grew up as a big fan, got to go to the games and go into locker rooms and stuff when I was a little kid. Met like Barry Sanders and people like that, Boomer Size, you know, different people. Uh, Sam Weish got me a pass when he was a coach uh, to go down on the field during game. But anyway, I, I'm a big Buccaneer fan. Uh, happy we got Tom Brady, and I'll take him, uh, you know, as far as we can, we, he can take us. But um, we'll see. You know, I'm not saying that we have a dream team or anything. It's a pretty tough uh, road at this point. But I'm very much a Buccaneer fan, excited that we uh, are even going to the playoffs this year. So anyway, I love you all. Happy New Year. I'm fired up about 2021. You're going to hear a lot more from me. I hope you have subscribed by this point. If you haven't, please do so. I know when you watch other YouTube videos, they're always like, smash that like button, subscribe, and hit that bell. That bell they're talking about is uh, <laughs> that'll help you get notified. I, I see that a lot of people have uh, clicked that bell, but they don't have their YouTube notifications enabled on their phone or on their device. So they're not getting notified when my new videos are coming out. It, there's only like a small percentage actually of people that get notified. And so if you that's what they're talking about with that bell. If you wanna get notified, do that. Uh, enable it in your settings. Um, please do subscribe. Look up my podcast. It's, it's available on any platform. And uh, if you haven't, follow me on Facebook. I'm on Instagram and Twitter. And, um, you know, my public Chad Michael Facebook page, like the the, the, uh, the business sort of page for that is not very, act, you know, it's not very, I don't have a lot of followers there, but I do have a personal uh, Facebook uh, profile also where I'm real active there. So if you're on Facebook, please hit me up there. If you can find me, send me a friend request. Um, like all my pages, insurance restoration training is a bigger page. Um, I, I say that because we're going to be announcing these dates for the 10 town store. Um, I'm going to be announcing those a little bit later on and making a lot more videos, been doing some work, uh, to my studio. So just planning a lot more content, more updates to my training course, uh, and a lot of other things. So I'm fired up. I am, I have high hopes for 2021. I hope you do too. Hit me up. If you need my help, hire me. I'm available for consulting. And, uh, it's about all I can think of for this video. A lot of housekeeping items in this one too. So, uh, get that supplementing process, that system set up starting today. Hopefully you've already made those goals before heading into the new year. But if you haven't, get it going. It's time. It's the new year. All right, rock on. Much love. God bless. I love you. Peace.